And I was kind of struck by this first song. And um, the lyrics started off, Our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God is capable. How many people believe that? Amen. Amen. 100%. Now see, that's what's with fire. Now Greg has preached about fire. How many people really believe it? Really believe it? Like, our God is powerful, our God Amen. is capable, our God is stronger. Mm -hmm. We have to really believe that. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about that today. I'm going to kind of uh, catapult myself off of Dominic's sermon last week. A lot of you are here. Does anyone remember what it was about? That what? Um, yeah. Dominic! <laughs> it was about the woman of blood, right? Oh, yeah. And the woman had this problem her whole lifetime. And it was just that little touch and that faith that healed her, right? So, faith is paramount. Marcy and I were talking, Dominic were talking about how faith is always the, the paramount thing, right? And it always comes down to faith. Most good messages are around faith. And then, very interesting, because I'm going to talk a little bit about God's blessings. Because hmm. this one was blessed, right? So, we talked, is it always dependent on faith? There were some questions I put a Facebook status update that said, in life there's only, you know, people say in life there's only two things that are guaranteed. What are they? Yeah. Taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Taxes, right? Mm -hmm. But I s submit to you that there is another thing that's just as guaranteed. And that is? Love. God's word. God's promises. God's promises. God's promises. They are faithful and true. So we're going to talk today about God's promises. There's a book, an entire book, God's promises. He laid out a lot of promises for us. I'm going to talk about this. So, with that, I'd just like to enter into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I ask that your Holy Spirit indwell me, that it not be my words, and that these words that come out of my mouth influence those to draw closer to you, rely on you, I ask that our faith be strengthened, and I ask that our love fill our bodies. Please, in a mighty way, Lord, fill this group and everyone individual, and everyone we come into contact with, with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Alright. First verse I'm going to use is from Isaiah. It's verse 54, and it's, I'm um, sorry, chapter 54, verse 2. And the way the verse goes, for those of you who don't have your Bibles handy, Enlarge the place of your tent. Let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out. Spare not. Lengthen the cords and strengthen your stakes. So, does this mean that Mark and Deb should move to a bigger place as opposed to a smaller place? Is that what we're talking about here? Sure. No. <laughs> what we're talking about is God is saying make room for more. Think that you will be blessed. God wants that for you. If we set large, impossible goals, you'll find that you in your own means no way can achieve that. So let's set them, understand that God's going to assist us in those goals. Because if we set small goals, what are we saying? Well, God's not going to help us. I want to do something manageable so that I can do it myself. Right? So I'm going to encourage you to reach up a little bit higher, to expect good things. Greg's right, in this life there will be troubles. Jesus said so. There's going to be problems. But I believe that we serve a very powerful God that's capable of blessing us in the midst of our problems so that we can get through them, but also for victory for us to have a good life and so that there's purpose and there's a very good purpose for us to live good lives as Christians. Anyone have any thought as to why it would be a good idea that we are happy and we are blessed as Christians? What's the question? Why, why, why does God want us to be blessed and happy people? Because He loves us. He loves us, but additionally... Spread the word. Spread the word, right. It'll, we, we are a witness daily in our Preach actions. Preach the gospel. That's right. So, Psalms 2.8 says, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations. That's pretty darn big, right? Mm -hmm. He's talking to the people of, of Jerusalem back in the day. But it is still a paramount principle of saying, nothing is too small for God. And we've got to think like that. If we use motives to please God, then we can bless, you know, if we're blessed, we can bless others. We can witness to others of God's goodness, of God's grace, of God's power. These are things that we should be constantly thinking of. Great expectations require a history, uh, uh, I'm sorry, require a fire in your soul. Like Greg talked about this. His passion is admirable. We talk, you know, Dominic being such a stalwart husband and father, 
you know, Greg's with this passion. We all have these gifts, but there's really, it's an important to have this fire in your soul. You know, we can trust God because we have experiences. Each one of us have experiences that remind us that God has been there for us in the difficult times. Monica is a great example. Look where she is now compared to where she was a year and a half or so from now. We, at one point, our house was burned down. And we thought, you know, well, God will just work it out for us. And, and he did. And he worked it out better. Monica's in a better place. God always has, sees far enough into the future to know that this is okay. And while we're in the midst of what seems to be bad, we know that God actually wants it to be better for us. Um, I was engaged, in, and you know, I don't like to, a lot of times during testimony, I have lots of praises. I, I feel like I'm an extremely blessed man. And I can tell you about this tremendous sale that I got. I didn't want to make a big deal out of it, but I trusted in faith that God would come through. Even when things looked really bad, and at one point it looked really bad. We hadn't heard from the customer for an entire month. We had a back order for this product for a year. It was likely not to happen. In fact, all my colleagues would tell me it's not going to happen. But I told them, I said, but I believe God's going to bless me and we're going to get it. However, if we don't get it, I still believe God's going to bless me because I know that it was meant for somebody else at a time that would best serve them. And that I would learn and experience that. Or I would have something better waiting for me. And I honestly believe that always. In fact, my colleague said to me the other day, he goes, you know, things are going pretty good. I'm, you ever get that feeling when things are going really good, like something bad's going to happen? And I said, you know what, naturally, yes, but I don't let that happen. I convince myself that God wants these good things to happen to me and for things to continue to get even better. Mm -hmm. But our nature is, because we're influenced by Satan, to think, oh no, things are going too good, too long. It's going to bad happen. Mm -hmm. Everyone's shaking their head, because we all feel that way. <laughs> that's Satan and that's man's nature. It's been too good, too long. This world is full of problems. My problems are just around the corner. We can't even enjoy sometimes the good things because we're worried about the bad thing that's coming around the corner, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to change your way of thinking a little bit about this. And you did have something bad. <laughs> so I want to, many of you know the story of Jabez, yes? Show of hands, just how many people know the story of Jabez? Jabez, well, to give you a little background, does anyone have any idea, we have some scholars here, maybe I can pick on Mark or Dom or, or Greg, Jabez, anyone have an idea what Jabez translates to? Joe? No. no. It means it means something. It's the my middle name is actually Scott, but if you ask Carolyn, what's my middle name, Carolyn? Trouble. Trouble. That's what Jabez <laughs> means. Now I don't know why you name your child Trouble. Mm -hmm. um, just like you wouldn't name your child Jezebel today, right? You wouldn't likely name your daughter mm -hmm. Jezebel, right? <laughs> Certain names are, are pretty bad. But Jabez, <laughs> they, you know, Jabez asked very humbly. He he asked God to do bless him abundantly, and enlarge his territory. Sounds very selfish. And a lot of times people have questions like, shouldn't you be praying for others? But you can pray for yourself if it's for God's ultimate purpose, which is to advance his word. If we're downtrodden, if we're struggling, nobody's going to want to say, well, I want that lifestyle. And I want to be that Christian that's always struggling, that's always, you know, complaining, and, you know, well, you know, we, we think humility, and there is great virtue in humility. But even while you're being blessed, you can be humble and share those blessings with people. It affords you the opportunity to be a blessing to others. If we're struggling, we can't help anyone else. So I want you to understand that we should not be containing God's blessings. He has a lot of promises for us, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. In fact, as, as Dominic pointed out, it was that faith. It was that humbleness you kneeled down. It was that faith that allowed that. What happened? A miracle happened just by faith. So there's some discussion, is it just faith alone? Well, what does it take? In this case, it pretty much was just faith, right? Mm -hmm. And most of the things we require just faith. Now sometimes, promises are conditional. And a lot of times they're really conditional on having faith or having a relationship with God. Sometimes there's other things, and we can talk a little bit about that. One of the things I wanted to mention is if we're serving this great God, this strong God, he's the king of kings, right? Let's think about kings for a minute. I'm going to tell you a little story just to illustrate how we think differently as peasants compared to the way God thinks as a king. And some of you may have heard this story, and I think it's been circled around the, the Christian community. It's, it's not necessarily new. But there was a, a very wealthy man, very wealthy, but he was going to visit in Saudi Arabia a king, right? And this king had dominion over wealth that you just could not believe. And he was invited to go play golf at the king's golf course. And uh, so he went gladly, and they had a great time, you know. They got off really well, and he said, you know, 
I had such a wonderful time, I'd like to give you a gift. You know, what, what, what can I give you? He's like, oh, I don't really have anything. I don't really need anything. No, I want to give you a gift. And he says, well, you know, I don't really, I don't know, maybe a nice golf club. How about a golf club? Right? So it's like, done. He returns back home. Weeks goes by, two weeks go by, nothing. He's wondering what's going on. He's expecting, oh, he's going to get a golf club. Maybe it'll be made out of gold. Maybe it'll have some jewels on the handle. Maybe it'll be just like super dupe and I can hit, you know, 350 yards on my drive. Whatever it is. Right? He's, and then he gets in the mail. No, nothing that looked like a golf club, a little envelope. And he opens up the envelope and he looks at it and he's like, oh, I just have the deed to a golf club. The golf who gave him a golf course, <laughs> gave him the property to an 18-hole golf course. Wow. Cost quite a bit more than the golf club <laughs> that he was expecting. So now he's the owner of a golf club. <laughs> That's the difference between the way a king thinks versus the way we think as peasants. We think, oh, this is, this is, this is too much. But we can ask God for more. Why should we rely on ourselves when we have a Father in Heaven with unlimited resources, right? He owns everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'll ask our resident Jewish person here that we always ask all the Jew questions. I'm going to put you on the spot, Marcy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have any idea what El Shaddai translates to? Well, it's the Lord. It's God. It actually translates to... The Lord, the God that is more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. How many times have us have enough? Very rarely. Once in a while we'll have enough. Oh, we're full. We've had enough. <laughs> it doesn't last long. Then you want more, right? You have a house. It's beautiful. That's, that's enough for me. And a lot of times, you know, it's fine. You, you want to be content. But we are having a God that is more. More than enough. And I really want you to understand. More than enough. We're talking riches in heaven. He wants to give you. Now, I don't want to be one of those people that come up here and just praise, you know, you, know, you can make all these claims about wealth, because it's not about wealth in this world. Greg's absolutely right. You know, there's a lot of things you can chase in this world that are just fruitless. But in the context of living this life, we, should, we do have purpose. And, you know, I'm going to speak to you about claiming some of God's promises that are available to us. And we'd be foolish not to do that. So, I would ask you, do you think God wants you to struggle? <clears throat> if there's not a lesson behind it, I can't imagine why. There are certainly struggles, but those are for our benefit, right? Right. But in, I'll also ask you this question. Do you think God's going to work if you don't believe that he's capable of it? No. Right. No, yes. What about it? Yes. What, do you think he's going to help you if, you, if you're, if he's, <laughs> do you think if you, he's not interested in helping you? Do you think that? Mm. No. No. God does want to help you. He is interested in you. He's capable, but it does require that you believe in him. And that faith is important. It's so important that Jesus illustrated in, in the form of a mustard seed. If you had the faith of a mustard seed, which is the smallest of seeds, and it is a really small seed, if you had that little faith, you could move that mountain. We're talking that all of us know it, it's, it's impossible to move a mountain. Right? Because if you have that little bit of faith. It was a, um, who read the text about with the, uh, from Mark? Was it Greg? That, what about... With, you know, out of the water immediately. Impossible. You can't walk in water. But we tend to think, oh, that's just, you know, we, we believe it's true, but we don't believe it's going to happen to us. We don't believe the impossible. That's our limitations of faith. Faith is extremely important. But we, we don't have any excuses when we get in agreement with God, when we say, you know, God, I know you promised me this. This is a powerful statement. So when we talk about these promises in this promise book, um, we got to do more than just have faith. We have to have faith that you know God's capable, God's powerful, but we have to be specific about what we want. And one of the things, the way to 